If you are anything like me and constantly browsing award winning websites for inspiration, there is no chance you miss this running portfolio. This site has earned multiple recognitions including site of the day, a developer award and portfolio honors. And it's easy to see why. A few weeks ago, some pro members shared this website as a source of inspiration and even I saw it before too but I initially avoided it because I thought it was way beyond my skill set. And to be honest, it still is. But last weekend, I decided to at least take a shot at it and attempt to recreate this impressive work section using my current limited understanding of 3JS. I won't lie, it was incredibly time consuming. After countless hours, I managed to build a very basic version of the original experience using JavaScript Canvas, 3JS and Scroll Trigger. While it's not an exact replica, I thought it's still somewhat close enough to share. So with this video, my goal is to walk you through my process, how I built this, hoping it might help you build similar animated layouts. I also tried to enhance my boring version by adding images as texture on a sort of curved plane geometry. But for this tutorial, we'll focus on the simpler version to keep things straightforward. If you are interested in exploring both versions, you can check out the pro membership via the link in the description where you'll get access to the source code for all these projects. Alright, let's dive into the code. For the HTML structure, we'll need three main sections, an intro, a work section and an outro. To ensure the page doesn't look empty, I'll include some placeholder text using h1 elements in both the intro and outro sections. Next. The work section will be divided into two parts, one for the text container where our canvas background animation will render and another for the card layout. Each card will be split into two components, the card image and the card copy. The card image will be simply an image tag with the correct image path. The copy will feature placeholder text wrapped in a paragraph element. I'll replicate this structure a few times and update the images and text for variety. For this project, I have included 7 card elements. That covers the HTML structure, let's move on to styling. We'll begin by removing any default margin and padding and setting box sizing to border box to ensure consistency across all elements. I'll set the body background color and hide any horizontal overflow to maintain a clean layout. For images, we'll ensure they take up 100% of their containers with object width set to cover so they scale perfectly without distortion inside the cards. Each section will take up the full viewport width and height, positioned relatively with hidden overflow to keep the animations within the bounds. In the intro and outro sections, I'll use flexbox to center the content both vertically and horizontally. The background color will match the body's background color with black text. The headings in these sections will use a custom font with a lighter font weight, uppercase text and a responsive font size of 5 viewport width. Moving to the work section, I'll apply a black background and hide overflow to give prominence to match the look of the original website. We'll position the canvas elements absolutely, layering them with z-index values where the grid canvas sits at the base and the letters canvas on top. The text container will cover the entire section with absolute positioning, pointer events disabled and perspective set to 2500 pixels for 3D effects. Each animated letter will be absolutely positioned with a bigger font, bold font weight, a large font size and the same color. I'll ensure they have transform origin set to center and preserve 3D for smooth animations. Next, we'll style the card container to span 500 viewport width with padding on the left to push the cards outside the viewport. Using flexbox for layout, centered alignment, and a high Z index. Each card will have a compact width of 10%, height of 50%, with a black background, vertical column layout, and a gap between elements for separation. For the card image, we'll ensure overflow is hidden to keep images contained while the card copy will display uppercase text using a custom font styled with a font size of 12 pixels and the accent color. The 
that's it for the css now let's move on to the javascript part first we'll make sure our code runs only after the html content is fully loaded then I will initialize Linus to create a smooth scrolling experience and ensure that it updates whenever we scroll. Next, I'll connect Linus with GSAP by adding it to the GSAP ticker for seamless integration while also disabling lag smoothing for precise animations. We'll then select key elements from our HTML, including the work section and the cards container, which will animate horizontally. To calculate how far the cards container needs to move, I'll multiply the window's width by 5, giving us the total distance. I'll also set an initial position for the cards container to keep track of their movement. A crucial part of this setup is using a linear interpolation function. This function helps us smoothly transition between the current and target positions over time, giving our animation a polished and natural feel. Next, we'll add the grid canvas to our project. I'll start by creating a new canvas element dynamically and assigning it an ID for easy reference. Then we'll append this canvas to the work section so that it becomes part of our layout. To draw on this canvas, I'll get its 2D rendering context which allows us to create shapes, colors and animations. Since we want our canvas to be crisp on all screens, including high resolution displays, I'll adjust its size according to the device's pixel ratio. This ensures that the canvas scales properly without losing quality. We'll set both the actual dimensions and the displayed dimensions of the canvas to match the viewport size. Finally, I'll apply the scaling to the canvas context to maintain sharp visuals. With the grid canvas now set up, we are ready to move forward with drawing the grid and adding more interactive elements. I'll begin by setting the canvas background to black and filling the entire area to create a clean base. Next, I'll set the grid color to our accent color, matching the project's theme. To define the grid structure, I'll choose a small dot size and set the spacing between dots to ensure a balanced layout. We'll calculate the number of rows and columns needed based on the canvas dimensions, adding few extra columns for smooth scrolling. To create the grid animation, I'll add an offset that shifts based on the scroll progress, giving us a dynamic effect as we navigate through the page. Then, for each position on the grid, I'll draw a small circle using the arc method and fill it with our chosen color. This looping process will generate a seamless animated grid that reacts to our scrolling, enhancing the overall visual experience. I'll start by creating a new scene, which will act as the container for all our 3D elements. Then I'll add perspective camera with a field of view of 50 degrees, an aspect ratio based on the window size, and set its position to give us a clear view of the scene. To render the scene, I'll initialize a WebGL renderer with anti-aliasing for smooth edges and alpha transparency to blend it seamlessly with our design. I'll set the renderer size to match the viewport dimensions and apply a clear color with full transparency and adjust the pixel ratio for high resolution displays. Finally, I'll add this renderer to our work section by appending it as a new canvas element. This completes our 3D setup and now we are ready to create and animate our text paths in the next step. We'll start by defining a function to generate animation paths by calculating points along the x-axis. Each point's vertical position will be adjusted using a sine wave, creating smooth wave-like motion. While looking how to do this, I think I found a post on a 3JS forum or somewhere else, not sure, where someone used this Catmull Roam cow to create paths. This cow connects all our calculated points smoothly, forming a path that our text can follow. The goal here is to position the text along these paths. We'll calculate around 21 points evenly spaced along the x-axis with y values shifting based on the sine function and a subtle depth added along the z-axis. Once the paths are created, I will add multiple lines to represent each letter's movement. Our text elements will be placed on these paths and animated to follow them as we scroll, achieving the same dynamic pattern seen in the original site. Next, we'll add the text elements to our 3D parts. I'll start by selecting the text container from our HTML. Then, I'll create a map to store each letter's current and target positions for smooth animation. For each path, I'll generate multiple letter elements dynamically. Each letter will be wrapped in a div with the class letter and assigned one of the letters from the word work. I'll append these letters to the text container and store their positions in the map. 
This setup ensures that each letter is placed on its respective path and is ready to animate along the curves. This setup brings us closer to the final effect where the letters flow seamlessly along the paths as we scroll through the page, mirroring the original design's captivating animation. I will set different speed multipliers for each path to create variation in movement. This will ensure that each line of text animates at its own pace, adding depth to the overall animation, just like the original website. Next, I'll define a function to update the target positions of each letter based on the scroll progress. As you scroll, each letter will find its position along the curve by calculating a point on the path. This point changes dynamically with scroll, making the animation smooth and responsive. Using 3JS, I'll project each point from the 3D space onto a 2D screen. Then, I'll update the target position of the letters by mapping these projected points to the screen coordinates. This process ensures that every letter smoothly transitions along its path as you scroll, perfectly replicating the engaging animation from the original site. Now that we have the target position set up, the next step will be to animate the letters between that current and target positions for seamless motion. I'll create a function that updates each letter's position by checking the distance between its current and target coordinates. If the distance is too large, I'll directly set the current position to the target to avoid any visual glitches. For smaller distances, I'll use linear interpolation to gradually move the letter closer to their target positions, ensuring a seamless transition. Once the position are updated, I will apply CSS transformations to move each letter on the screen using Translate 3D for smooth 3D-like movement. Additionally, I will update the position of the card container as we scroll. The cards will move horizontally across the screen based on the scroll progress using GSAP for smooth animation. By calculating the target position and interpolating from the current position, the card container will glide effortlessly as we navigate through the page. With this step complete, we now have both the text and cards moving smoothly in sync with our scroll, bringing our animation to life. Now let's finalize our animation by tying everything together. I'll create an animation loop that continuously updates the letter positions and the card container's position, ensuring everything stays in sync with our scroll. This loop will keep running using request animation frame for smooth and efficient rendering. Next, I'll set up a scroll trigger that watches our work section. As we scroll, this trigger will pin the section in place and update our animation based on the scroll progress. Each time we scroll, the target position of the letters will update along their paths and the grid animation will adjust to match the overall scroll. I'll start by drawing the initial grid, triggering our animation loop and setting the target positions for the letters right at the beginning to ensure everything is ready. To make our animation responsive, I will add an event listener that listens for window resize events. Whenever the window size changes, I'll resize the grid canvas, redraw the grid based on the current scroll position and update the camera's aspect ratio for accurate 3D rendering. I'll also update the render size to match the new window dimensions and recalculate the target positions for the letters to ensure that the animation stays consistent across different screen sizes. With these final touches, our interactive animation is now fully functional, responsive and ready to deliver an engaging experience just like the original inspiration. So that was it. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.